Just a reminder for anyone who is here, um, if you would like to follow along um, with the book that I'm reading, if you'd like to follow along with your eyes, then you can um, find a copy of the Sea Folks text in our um, classroom. It's in the remote learning section of classroom and it's I think the first thing that I posted in there so it should be way at the bottom. So go to the classwork stream and um, and find the remote learning tab should be at the top and then below all of the daily assignments that I've posted um, you'll find the seed folks text. So that's just if you want it. If you don't want it, then that's totally fine. But um, just so everyone has that information. Hello, my friends. How are we doing on this sunny morning? Hopefully good. Hey, Ash. All right, friends. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um because my videos have been running long and if they are longer than 20 minutes, that's really annoying for me. So we'll just get started. Um, today's chapter is Virgil. Um, and this is chapter seven of Seed Folks. We're about a third of the way through at this point. Um, it's 70 pages and we're on page 29. So I guess that's not a third. Um, <laughs> almost half I guess pretty close to half all right um so Virgil my father he always has a smile on his face and a plan moving in his head this chapter is a little bit sad but it's also like I don't know nice in that like adults like sad things kind of way I think we were standing together on the sidewalk while the men were clearing the lot. So this is sort of taking place at the same time as the last chapter because Sam at the beginning of his chapter said, I saw people on the sidewalk watching something. I crossed to join them like a cat who smells herring. Men in jumpsuits were clearing the lot. So Virgil's chapter is happening at the same time. We were standing together on the sidewalk while the men were clearing the lot. So they're watching all the trash being taken away um, from the lot. I was watching the rats running for their lives, because of course the rats live in the trash and the trash is being removed. They were shooting off every which way. A couple of dealers came over, the ones always bragging about how bad they are. A rat ran right up one of their legs. The dude screamed, just like women do with a mouse in cartoons, only louder. He shook his leg like his toe was being electrocuted. That's another good um, simile. He shook his leg like his toe was being electrocuted. His toe wasn't being electrocuted, but it was like that. The rat flew off and dove down a storm drain. I looked at my father. That's when I saw that he hadn't paid the rat any mind, hadn't even turned his head. His eyes were stuck completely on the garden land being uncovered. He had a two foot wide smile on his face. Now, two things. Does the dad really have a two foot wide smile on his face? Two feet is, I don't know, that's about one foot. So double that. Does he really have a two foot wide smile on his face? No. We call this hyperbole if you are on Team Emerald, which I think none of you that are here are. I don't know. You might have talked about this with your English teachers. Hyperbole is an extreme exaggeration. He had a two foot wide smile. It wasn't just a big smile. It was two feet wide. That is exaggeration to prove a point. The point here being the dad is pretty pleased. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, which you guys don't know, um, is that so every um, chapter has a little drawing hey Abby um in addition to their portrait so each chapter so for example here's Sam he has his portrait but he also has a pumpkin which I actually asked you about in today's quiz um each chapter has one portrait and one little um like additional drawing so this is Leona she has that's a goldenrod plant 
Um, so what I wanted to tell you was for Virgil, who I will show you all again, people who just arrived. Um, Virgil has this. This is a locket. Um, and as you're thinking about it, um, as we go through the chapter, let me know what you think, um, how that's going to be important. Why is that his, um, his picture? Wow, this is a long chapter. Okay. My father drove a bus back in Haiti. Here he drives a taxi. That night, he drove himself way across town to borrow two shovels from a friend of his, one for the dad and one for, of course, Virgil. The next morning was the first day without school. I was done with fifth grade forever. I'd been planning on sleeping till noon to celebrate. I'm sure some of you identify with that last day of school, sleep in, man, or the next day after, first day of summer. But when it was still half dark, my father shook my shoulder. School was over, but the garden was just starting. We walked down and picked out a place to dig up. The ground was packed so hard, the tip of my shovel bounced off it like a pogo stick. We tried three spots till we found one we liked. Then we walked back and forth, picking out broken glass like chickens pecking seeds, right? This is a vacant lot. It's not like just perfect farmland. You have to kind of like make it better. After that, we turned the soil. We were always digging up more trash, bolts and screws and pieces of brick. That's how I found the locket. So here comes the locket. What do we think this is gonna be? It was shaped like a heart and covered with rust, with a broken chain. I got it open. Inside was this tiny photo of a girl. She was white with a sad looking face. She had on this hat with flowers on it. I don't know why I kept it instead of tossing it in our trash pile. I'll show you the picture one more time. It seemed like hours and hours before we had the ground finished. We rested a while. Then my father asked if I was ready. I thought he meant ready to plant our seeds, but instead we turned another square of ground. Then another after that. Then three more after that. My father hadn't been smiling to himself about some little garden. He was thinking of a farm to make money. I had seen a package of seeds for pole beans and hoped that's what we would grow. They get so tall that the man in the picture was picking them away at the top of the ladder. But my father said no. He was always asking people in his cab about how to get rich. One of them told him that fancy restaurants paid lots of money for this baby lettuce, smaller than the regular kind, to use in rich folk's salads. The fresher it was, the higher the price. My father planned to pick it and then race it right over in his cap, running red lights if he had to. Lettuce seeds are smaller than sand. So he has this great plan. He's going to get rich. He's going to like use the community garden to um, grow this lettuce. And then he's going to sell it to restaurants and he's going to become rich from growing this lettuce in the community garden. Um, it's a great plan. We're going to see how it turns out. <laughs> lettuce seeds are smaller than sand. I felt embarrassed planting so much ground. Nobody else's garden was a quarter the size of ours. Suddenly, I saw Miss Fleck. I hardly recognized her in jeans. She was the strictest teacher in Ohio. I had had her for third grade. She pronounced every letter in every word and expected you to talk the same way. She was tall and even blacker than my father. No slouching in your seat in her class or any kind of rudeness. The other teachers seemed a little afraid of her, too. She walked over just when we finished planting. Well, Virgil, she said, you seem to have claimed quite a large plantation here. That's just what I was afraid of hearing. I looked away from her, down at our sticks. We had put them in the ground and run string around them, cutting up our land into six pieces. I didn't know why till my father stepped forward. Actually, madam, only this very first area here is ours, he said. So he knows that he's using more land than everyone else, which isn't necessarily fair, but he has a whole story planned. He had on his biggest smile. He must have remembered her. The others we have planted at the, 
at the request of relatives who have no tools or who live too far. Really now, said Miss Fleck. Yes, madam, said my father. He pointed at the three closest squares of land. My brother Antoine, my auntie Anne-Marie. My eyes opened wide. They both lived in Haiti. I stared at my father, but he just kept smiling. His finger pointed farther to the left. My uncle Philippe, he lived in New York. My wife's father, he died last year. And her sister. My mother didn't have any sisters. I looked at my father's smiling face. I'd never watched an adult lie before. And what did your extended family of gardeners ask you to plant? said Miss Fleck. Lettuce, said my father. All lettuce. What a coincidence, she said back. Does she believe him? She just stood, then walked over to her own garden. I'm pretty sure she didn't believe him. But what principle could she send him to? That lettuce was like having a new baby in the family. And I was like its mother. I watered it in the morning if my father was still out driving. It was supposed to come up in seven days, but it didn't. My father couldn't figure out why. Neither of us knew anything about plants. This wrinkled old man in a straw hat tried to show me something when I poured out the water. He spoke some language, but it sure wasn't English. I didn't get what he was babbling about till the lettuce finally came up in wavy lines and bunches instead of straight rows. I had washed the seeds out of their places. Um, who do we think the wrinkled old man in the straw hat who speaks some language, but it sure isn't English is? We know who that is. Who wears a straw hat and doesn't speak English? The minute it came up, it started to wilt. It was like a baby always crying for its milk. I got sick of hauling bottles of water in our shopping cart like I was some old lady. Then the heat came. The leaves shriv shriveled up. Some turned yellow. That lettuce was dying. Um, are rich people going to buy dying old yellow shriveled lettuce? Nice job, friends. Tio on. My father practically cried looking at it. He would stop by in his cab when he could with two five-gallon water containers riding in the back instead of passengers. Then bugs started eating big holes in the plants. I couldn't see anyone buying them from us. My father had promised we would make enough to buy me an 18-speed bike. I was counting on it. I had already told my friends. My father asked all his passengers what to do. His cab was like a library for him. Finally, this is in the days before Google, friends, so you can't just Google stuff. You have to, like, go to the library and look it up. <laughs> Finally, one of them told him that spring or fall was the time to grow lettuce, that the summer was too hot for it. My father wasn't smiling when he told us this. I couldn't believe it. I stomped inside. I could feel that 18 speed f slipping away. I was used to seeing kids lying and making mistakes, but not grown-ups. I was mad at my father. Then, I sort of felt sorry for him. That night, I pulled out the locket. I opened it up and looked at the picture. We had studied Greek myths in school that year. In our book, the goddess of crops and the earth had a sad mouth and flowers around her, just like the girl in the locket. I scraped off the rust with our dish scrubber and shined up that locket as bright as I could get it. Then I opened it up, just a crack. And then I whispered, save our lettuce to the girl. And that's it. It's the end of the chapter. No lettuce for the rich people. I agree with you, Ash. So it's kind of a long chapter. We don't have a ton of time to chat about it, but there are sort of two things going on at the same time in this chapter. Virgil like watches this happen in front of him that he, um, his dad lies to this teacher and his dad has also sort of lied to him in a way about the, um, about the bike he didn't do it on purpose he wasn't like i'm gonna tell my son that i will buy him a bike and then crush his dreams but it is to some extent you know it doesn't come true so it feels like a lie to virgil and that can be really hard i think for kids to be like oh my gosh adults make mistakes and they aren't perfect and like why are they in charge um so there's that thread that's going on and then there's the thread of this locket thing um yes it is a ghost locket at the end he sort of treats it like it's um 
like a Greek goddess, right? We studied Greek myths in school that year, the goddess of crops and earth. Is that Demeter? Anyone? Um, so he whispers, save our lettuce to the girl. And this, like a lot of the other chapters, kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Um, we don't know if the lettuce gets saved. Oh, okay. Could the locket be Anna's? She did live there her whole life. Could the locket be Anna's? Sure. That's what um, Hadley asked. Yeah. Could the locket be Anna's? She did live there her whole life. Certainly. Um, I like that connection. I, I love making connections back to other stuff that we know. Um, I always like to say like authors don't put details into their books for no reason. Um, so anything that you can make a connection about I love that um because you might as well you might as well assume like oh that must be Anna it could be Anna um I think Hadley has good reasoning for the locket being Anna um because the girl is white right and she's wearing a hat so yeah love that theory um good great thank you my Greek gods are um still stuck in my head from when I taught Percy Jackson and had to learn all the Greek gods Questions, comments about Virgil. Um, next, I believe, is one of my least favorite chapters, possibly. Yes. Next, we have my least favorite chapter. <laughs> so tune in tomorrow, I guess, to see why. Um, there was something else I wanted to say to you all, and now I forget what it is. Oh, um, if you haven't seen already, uh, my mother, Miss Kerner, has created a short video for you about creating your own seeds um, in your own like little mini garden. I will show you mine, so you should go watch that. It's in my feed. Um, my title? Oh. Um, it's in my feed, and I'm just going to show you really quickly my little seeds, if I can find the turnaround button. There it is. So here are my little seeds grown in the window. You can see um, I started them almost a week ago. This one has, like, a little root coming out of it already. So if you want to do this, it's a fun time. Um, I'm going to be transplanting them soon, um, which will be pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, so that uh, video is up in my feed that my mother has filmed for us, um, and I'll be keeping you updated on how my little plants are going. I'm going to wrap this up because it's about time. It was lovely to see you all, and I will see you tomorrow. Quiz is in my stories, tomorrow's quiz will be in my stories, and you will find out why I hate tomorrow's chapter of Seed Folks the most. Bye friends, have a great Thursday.